Hey guys, so today I'm going to be taking a look at the MK Energy 48 volt rack battery. This is a 100 amp hour battery, so 5.1 kilowatt hours, which means it's made up of 16 lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour battery cells. This battery uses lithium iron phosphate chemistry and it also has fire suppression, so that's something we can check out when I pop it open. Watts 24 7 sent me these batteries to review. There's a heated and non heated version of this same battery. So in the description online, it says anything below 32 degrees for the heated version. If you're trying to charge below 32 degrees, the heaters will kick on. I don't think this is the heated version, but that'll be pretty easy to tell when I pop it open. All right, so I'll focus in now and show you guys a little closer on the battery, and then I can show you the specs as well. So starting from the left, we see the positive and negatives, and I've actually seen this on a few different manufacturers where they've, they've got both the positive and negative terminals on the same side of the battery. Whereas some of the ones in the past that I've, most of the ones that we've seen in the past actually have positives on the complete uh, opposite side as the negatives over there. And Watts 24 7 actually sells racks as well. So it's designed for this type of battery. And here we have the reset button, your dip switches, run and alarm lights, state of charge light indicators there, dry contacts, RS45 and CAN protocol. It has both RS-232 and then RS-45-2, which these are from battery to battery, so battery communication between the batteries. And I can turn the menu on for you guys here. Let me peel this off. So it tells here it's in standby and state of charge the day, so now you know when I'm filming it here at the bottom <laughs> on 612. So you can check the running data, obviously there's no current being used, and you can check the cell temperatures, cell voltage of each individual cell. So they do a pretty good job with the menu. So I wanted to show you guys here, down at the bottom, there's the battery communication protocols, and they've got quite a bit for CAN and RS-485. There's a bunch on this battery, Pylon, which you saw, Growatt, Victron, a bunch. Um, down here at the bottom, there's also die, which is Solark. So this will communicate with Solark as well. And when you enter in, let's say we pick that as our communication protocol. Uh, let's change it to grow watt. So when we change it to grow watt there, it actually will reset the battery. And it's now changed to grow watt protocol. So they make it pretty easy. This is actually a nice BMS interface here. I'm going to pop it apart here in a few minutes, like I said, and we can check it out. Before I move on here, I better change it back to Pylon Tech there, because I'm going to need that later on for the EG4 6000 XP to be able to communicate with that. And here's the sticker on the top of the battery. This shows all the specs I mentioned before. I mentioned most of them anyway. I wanted to show you here, though, it says max charge and discharge 100 amps. Uh, but online, on Watts 24-7, it says that this BMS can go up to 120 amps. So we'll put that to the test here later on when I hook it up to the inverter and see what we can do with that. Nice, yeah, so we've got a plastic sheet over all the cells, and these just look like two little sticky insulators here, but this is actually the fire suppression. And I'll try to tag a video in so you guys can see how these work. But yeah, that's what these are here. I'll pop the cover off and I'll focus in on them so you can see them a little better. And that's the two fire suppressors there on the plastic sheet. So focusing in down here where the BMS is at, I don't recognize this BMS here, and I could try to look up and see if I can find what type it is. It's upside down here, but it does list it as a 100 amp BMS. So I definitely do have to test that 120 amps they list online for this. And I don't see, oh, by the way, this is a heated one here. You can see these two white leads going under there. There's a heater pad that runs underneath all the cells there. So yeah, if this does 
get down to 32 degrees, it will not charge uh, until these heaters kick on and it heats the cells back up. And you guys might be able to make out the just the corner of the orange heating pad going beneath the BMS there where those two white leads are going to. So yeah, cool. And we've got two 8-gauge wires for the positive and negative. I couldn't find any more details on the BMS, but as far as wire management, this is what you want to see, guys. Everything's tucked away in its own place. They've got protective covers on all the wires that could be exposed or rubbed. And yeah, everything looks great. Like I said, they've got everything stabilized here. So it looks good. Yeah, I'm going to put the cover back on and then we'll start on a capacity test. I'm going to get everything charged up and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I couldn't find it anywhere on the battery, like I said, but here it is, lithium iron phosphate 100 heating. So it's on the box there that they come in. But yeah, I didn't spot that before. So I'm going to charge this up now so we can do a discharge test in a little bit. And I do have a 20 amp charger, but I thought it might be more fun to hook up the charge verter. So I'll show you. I've got mulberries all over my fingers still from picking this morning from the tree <laughs> on a side note there that is the best tree if you guys can plant a mulberry uh, it's awesome of course it does stain everything it's near but so we'll power on the bms all right our state of charge is 48 percent let's take a look at the running data so we've got 52 volts. So let's go check the charge verter here. I'm going to change the voltage, the charging voltage on the charge verter here to 56.4. Really, we could probably do 57 volts to charge this fully. And the state of charge isn't going to matter there. And none of the start stop options are really going to matter. I just want to charge this fully here. So this, this voltage is really what's important. And I'm going to do it at 100 amps because I want to max this out and charge this battery quickly. Okay, the charge verter is rolling now. We've got 53 volts. Should read the same on the battery. We're up to 14 amps, it's rising. Yeah, this is crazy. At 92, 93 amps, I'm gonna be charged up probably in the next 20, 20 minutes, something like that. All right, sorry for the spider web of wires, guys, but I do a lot of different testing here. So you can see here, this is how I have it set up, positive and negative. And this is the shunt power here that I'm powering a Victron shunt right here so I can monitor how much uh, this battery discharges so we can do a discharge test. It's showing state of charge at 99%. I just started it up, so it was at 100% there. So we should be ready to start the discharge. I, had, I have communications hooked up as well to the 6000 6, XP. And as soon as I hooked it up on Pylon Tech, everything communicated right away. But I did change it to lead acid. So I'll probably change it back so you guys can see it somewhere in the video anyway. But I changed it to lead acid so I can discharge this battery fully for the discharge test. So we are right at 0.2C discharge rate there. And it's never nice when it's this hot out to use a heater, but it's a great resistive load for testing like this. So. Right around 20 amps is what you'd want for a 100 amp hour battery of discharge to be able to test it. So we'll check back here when it's fully discharged and see what the Victron shunt says. All right, so 0% state of charge. So we have uh, hit our low voltage cutoff. And let's check it out here. So yeah, 99 amp hours. I think that is probably because I charged at such a high C rate and I uh, probably could have used a little bit more resting time in between there and top charging it to get a little bit more into the battery. So that's probably why we're just a smidge off of that 100 amp hour rating. And I enabled battery communication again. I switched it to lithium and it started communicating right away. So we've got 100% battery here. So we should be able to do our discharge here. See how much amperage we can get out of this. Uh, see if we can get over 100 amps out of the BMS here. Okay, so we're at 101 amps of discharge current. 104. Doing fine so far. At 110, it gets an alarm light. Once 
117. That's just the screen clicked off. It is still running. 120 amps discharge right now. So it's holding at 120. It does have the alarm light on, but it is holding at 121. 120. Yeah. So we've got a sustained 121 rolling right along with it. All right, so we've got over five minutes, I think seven minutes now at uh, over 120 amps. It looks like 120, 122. It keeps going back and forth between the two. So I'm going to call that a success. Again, I wouldn't do this all the time, but in a pinch, if you only had one rack battery, you can squeeze some a lot of juice out of this one battery here. Before I stop though, let me put like 300 more watts on it just to see how much we can squeeze out before it clicks off. 127. 128. <laughs> there it goes. Okay, so that 120 mark is really where it's at. 120, 124 or something like that. All right, guys, so wrapping things up, I do like this battery. I like the fact that you can change the protocol so easily. And hopefully that's something the whole industry is going to be catching up on. I know the Indoor Power Pro wall mount battery that I reviewed, you can change it very easily on that as well. I also like the fact that you can squeeze 120 amps out of this battery and having that heating option is nice. And like you guys saw, this battery has a number of protocols. So I will put a link in the description below. You guys can check out and see if it will work on your inverter. And in a follow-up video, I may check the fire suppression and see how it works on this battery. So I've mentioned a lot of the pros already, but I wanted to mention a con, in my opinion, to the battery here is it doesn't have a built-in breaker. I prefer to have one on the battery itself, although you're gonna end up putting one in line as well. Yeah, I do like to have one on the battery. And that's about it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.